Welcome, rap it down, rap it down, rap it up. Welcome, rap it down, rap it down, rap it up. Welcome, rap it down, rap it down, rap it up. Dropping a morning log with Jivco. Hey, good morning, and welcome to Drop in the Morning Log with Jivco. This morning, I was thinking about the future of podcasts or potential people that will be big. Uh, certain items to make a good podcast, um, and the value of of podcasting so uh let's get started so i was thinking this morning who will be the next you know biggest <coughs> people in podcasting for example like once joe rogan stops podcasting you know due to whatever reasons who will be the next big one and i was thinking about it i'm thinking if the people that are immediately around him you know as successors if they decide to you know be a little more vocal and start their own <clears throat> podcast i think that'll be a big thing which in this case would be young jamie if he decides to voice his opinion and is able to make a similarly interesting podcast and content i think that would be the move the reason why i think that is because the production quality would be the same, if not very similar, because, you know, Young Jamie is Rogan's producer. So if he would like to go that route and, you know, while he's with uh, Rogan doing all of these hundreds of podcasts, I think that he would have a lot of lessons in the matter. Unless, of course, he's not interested in doing that sort of thing and someone else scoops them up for him to be their producer so i think it's a matter of you know a lot of things but for example uh, in a similar situation i think if once joey diaz and lee syatt kind of split ways i have a feeling that lee would have a very easy time doing his own thing especially because he's already through joey getting into comedy and he's already ha has his own like mini following and he's already actually part of the platform that is Joey's podcast. I think he'll have an easier time attaining followers not only due to production quality but also due to quality of content because you know he's a funny guy and uh, he's already becoming his own showman and everything so I think that might potentially be, in my opinion, the next wave of podcasters, you know, simply the successors of the big ones. But uh, obviously there's always going to be other people that will start some that will become big. There's people that are starting some every day uh, that are becoming a big thing. So that's that. So in terms of making a very quality podcast, I've noticed a few things. Some factors that are involved are, you know, the excitement of the interviewer within the interview is almost palpable. You know, the questions just keep flowing and the ideas just keep flowing if it's someone that the person's excited to talk to and that in turn is doing the podcast justice. I think it's very interesting and very important to also, you know, mostly add value to your content. Uh, when you start recording a podcast and that's one way to completely ensure it is there needs to be already a basis and foundation of the person wanting to have this interview and yeah, it's very interesting once that's that is the case uh, I know personally I've had the best podcast I like how I say that singularly but my single best podcast thus far has been with my friend uh, Brian, in my opinion, just because I was so goddamn interested in everything that he does. And not only that, but it had been so long coming um, that I kind of got myself all jacked up and excited just for it. So I think that's uh, the single most important factor is the excitement of the interviewer. You know, the following most important factors kind of just follow up from there. You know, everything kind of lands in place once that that first one is taken care of. Uh, but I would say be well researched, already have think, you know, thought out uh, questions or, you know, 
things to discuss or things to uh, have asked them and have them come from a very naturally uh, curious and ambitious place. Um, what I mean by that is you kind of have to have organic curiosity when you talk to someone, uh, especially when you start venturing down uh, ad lib, you know, topics and ad lib branches of conversation because there's a lot of improvising at play there and the best way to make it the most interesting is pretty much to just be in the moment and very uh, interested yourself. The moment you can, you know, kind of show your ambition and interest in the person, like through your words and through your conversation, the more you will draw the audience in. And speaking of which, I was just listening to a uh, podcast by Bert Kreischer. Uh, I just listened to like the first part of it, of the uh, of him interviewing Dane Cook, and you know that was brought up how Bert thinks that that was almost one of his uh, you know best podcasts because he was so excited to have Dane on, and they kind of kicked it off and. They also had a lot of history, so that helped a lot, and uh, it, it also sounded like it was very long in the making, or uh, long coming, uh, and he was just very excited to have him on, and they just had so much to discuss that uh, you wouldn't even be able to encapsulate in such a short amount of time. So another thing that Dane actually mentioned in their conversation that I found interesting was uh, resilience and how that plays a g enormous factor uh, within your your production your image your brand as well as you know it also makes up for the lack of talent sometimes if you have resilience that is much more uh, respected and much more you know noteworthy than even the ability to be talented in what you do which is which I thought was very interesting because that's kind of true like your your podcast could suck or you know whatever you do your drawings could suck uh, you know whatever you do drawing singing be a car mechanic you know when you start off with anything you're not going to be very efficient uh, and even if you're not naturally talented but the more you do it the more you practice the more time you put into uh, your art and craft, that'll determine basically at the end of the day how good everything will be. And you'll naturally become better. And that's something that is very important to digest and always keep in mind because it doesn't matter how much natural talent you have as long as you hustle and you want that goal. And uh, you put in the hours and the practice, you're going to attain your goals way faster in all, on all fronts. You know, not only will you become better, for example, if someone doesn't practice their instrument, like let's say they play saxophone or trumpet or something, like if you don't practice your instrument but you're very naturally talented, that doesn't mean anything because at the end of the day, it's going to be the person that puts in many hours to attain the same if not a better goal and you just see that in the final quality of the product that you know, whatever you're listening to or if you're looking at something like art or writing you know it's the proof is in the pudding as they say and I'm a very strong believer of that so I think you know not everyone will have a uh, a protege or follower per se uh, in regard to them having someone follow them like that such as the people I described but um, you know like Lee Syed for Joey Coco Diaz or uh, you know young Jamie for Rogan or I forget that guy's name that Bert just got like for example like Bill Bird does his own recording does his own everything and you know he won't have any protege coming up in those same shoes because no one does the production for him but you know it's it's very interesting because 
you know, I might be completely wrong. You know, whoever is the next wave of podcasters might have nothing to do with the people that are that were their sound producers or their sound engineers. They might a not have the voice for it, and by voice I mean just not have the content or the prowess uh, in their soul to do it. They might not want to do it uh, to that token. And they also might not have the same ambition in being as active, you know, as that other person or, you know, what have you. But if someone like, for example, a Lee Syatt uh, took that vigor that Joey's built and, you know, made his own version of it and encapsulated uh, like a little bit of what Joey is and his energy, I think there's a lot of potential for people to kind of rake in followers once uh, the other platform has died. I mean, there could also be some overlap. You know, he could start his own thing uh, during the other person's, and as one dies out, no pun intended, the other could rise to uh, to stardom. So, you never know. Also, like I know, for example, Rogan's previous sound tech, Brian Redband, I know he does comedy and he does his own podcast and has, you know, for a while. And then there's also like cross pollination of Rogan's onto his and, uh, you know, other comedians on his as well. I believe it's called Death Squad. And I think that just his approach and his silliness automatically kind of puts a damper on my opinion of him to begin with especially on earlier episodes of, you know, with him and Rogan. And at one point in time, I remember even uh, Rogan stopped the podcast because Brian was saying some silly shit. And Rogan was like, you know, why would you, why would you say that? Like, you know, whatever he was saying, he was just being silly and absurd. You know, he's saying how he would like to keep his product high quality. And, you know, there's a certain par that he would like to maintain with his podcast and that's not something that he would like to mess around with or have Brian like delineate for him and it it was just like a very interesting moment to witness on the recording and that's true you know you definitely don't want to compromise your own product because someone's being silly or something like that you know like he he might have just been completely blasted and high on some pot and just done his own thing while while they were recording but the thing is rogan was just trying to like despite him being probably obliterated as well he was just trying to maintain his product simultaneously and keep it to have a level of value and i think that that's very important lesson to take away from it so i think there's going to be a very interesting future of the media because there's already you know the precedent has already been set so I don't know if I mean I know there's already been some experimentation of VR podcasts and so forth but I think that you know adding video aspect to it is already giving you a little bit of uh, present value and allowing you to kind of in a way hang out with the people that are talking and brings it back to like a baseline that you would never otherwise attain if you didn't closely know these people that are in this conversation so it's very interesting i'm a fan of it it seems like it's blowing up and i think it's also a very good way to discuss very important topics you know like a long-form discussion with potentially no bullshit and uh, it's just a fascinating thing to learn things from experts and have experts kind of give an insight on like a more personal opinion basis of things and kind of just see where things lie. So I'm very excited for the future of it and uh, I'm very happy to be part of it. And I, I hope I do it justice in the future. Not only the people who I interview, but my product and I add value to my platform for people tuning in, whatever the numbers be. On that note, I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Go out, drink some beers, and show some love.
not only to people around, but to, uh, to your close friends and family. Adios.